Basically, cable enclosures fall into ladder, tray, and mesh. And, and what are the differences? So effectively, cable ladder is very heavy duty. So imagine like a ladder leaning up against the wall. And then imagine if that ladder was actually connected to the wall and then very thick cables, usually on the AC side, are connected to that ladder. So the ladder is a lot heavier duty than tray. Now tray is a lot lighter than ladder in most cases and it's designed for horizontal runs. A classic example is DC cable on a roof. It can be heavy duty as well, but it tends not to be heavy as ladder. Now cable mesh is designed for supporting cables that are quite light in weight. So we're talking about comms cables, uh, internet cables and that sort of things. And it's primarily used indoors. So cable ladder, cable train, cable mesh come in standard sizes and I'm talking about the width. So 150mm, 300mm, 450mm and 600mm. And also in different side wall heights. So for instance, if we're using say an AC cable, you'd be using a, a higher side wall height than say running DC cable. So the side wall heights come in 45 mils, 50 mils and 85 mils. Now other characteristics we have to look at are, is the load rating of the actual ladder or tray we're talking about. So in other words, how much cable can I put in these trays? How far can I span the actual cable tray before I need another support? So really important, we do not want too much deflection in the tray and there's particular um, data sheets that will tell you that this particular tray has this amount of deflection using this cable that weighs X amount per metre. So cable tray for DC runs. Now here's some of the questions you should ask. How many cables am I putting in the tray? Is the cable tray going under something else? And of course, heat transfer. You're putting these cables in a tray, they're producing heat. Then you put another cable next to that existing cable, and then another one, another one, another one. This all plays a role, not only how far away they are, but how many they are. Look, the other thing is too, is that as the further away you are from that switchboard, in other words, the further away your array is, let's say it's one big roof, you're starting off with one or two strings and you're coming in. And I'm assuming we're not paralleling the string. So you're coming into the tray. So the tray doesn't have to be that wide. But right at the end, if there's a single run, you're gathering up all these extra cables and suddenly you're going from 150 mil to 300 mil, the 450 to 600. So the question you have to ask yourself as a designer is do I just use one standard size? That might be too expensive. Do I transition from 150 all the way up to 600 mil? That takes time to make it look neat. Do I use a standard tray all the way through to account for worst case scenario? Maybe you can get away with 450. So a lot of questions you have to ask and obviously it depends on the configuration of your strings and how you're coming into the actual tray. Now cable tray for AC runs. So AC cable is considerably heavier um, than DC, especially when you start going up into, into the larger um, sizes of XLPE. You're talking about a lot of weights, really horrible stuff to handle. So you're going to be using ladder in, in most cases, both in the vertical and horizontal runs. Also remember, because the cable is so heavy and you may be running up a wall or coming down a wall, think of the derating of the cable. Are you going to be using existing cable tray? Are you going to be putting multiple, again, multiple cables in that cable tray, which you are, but just think of that spacing between the actual cables themselves. Think about whether you need to use lid in that particular situation or not. It just depends. Obviously, check your standards. And also, that in the installation process, you may need machinery. You may need a scissor lift or something similar to get up and position and install on that wall. You do not want to be dealing with some of the larger um, diameter cables off a ladder. That, that, that's an absolute no-no from many perspectives. So we're talking about some um, tray at the moment. And this is one of the trays that have been used on this job. That's 150mm tray. 
Um, the depth, I'm not sure. I'll have to check that up. And the other tray we're using on the, this site is the 300 mil. So we've just got two different tray sizes. Now when joining tray, you need some joiners. And obviously you'll need your galvanized bolts. And I don't know if you can see, if you can zoom in on that. These bolts on the underside have a square section that lock into the square section there. So you can, so they lock in. And then you put the nut on the other side. Same situation, there's two of them stuck together actually. Can't get them, can't get them apart. That's for when you're doing risers, so lots of small little joins, when you're maybe going over some steps, etc. So it's the same principle as that. So this is the, the lid. Um, it's a one particular kind of lid that sits on top of the tray, covering the cables. Where it's cut, it's a good idea to spray some zinc or gal spray here. And then it's affixed with a galvanized hex head at certain intervals, depending on the design. Some trays actually have a peak, so they have actually have a profile more like a roof. And in those situations, there's more airflow and more area, uh, hence less heating of the cable. Um, but it all comes down to the design. How many cables are going in the tray, how close they are together, and what sort of currents they're carrying. So this is the earth lug that goes into the tray. Uh, where the earthing is connected and you can see that earth would go in here and it's, and it's crimped down. So effectively we have an earth point here, we're using an earth lug um, that basically bolts on to the cable tray and you can see here that we have um, an earth coming from this direction and an earth coming from this direction and they've been twisted together and placed in that one lug and gal met sprayed. So obviously you don't want corrosion, you want to maintain earth at all costs. And so they've sprayed a galvanizing spray to stop the, uh, the copper corroding.